In this video, which I'll try and keep as short as I can, I'm going to describe the custom UMA fuel flow indicator that uh, I designed and I have manufactured for the Hilla cycle. Here's a picture of it in an instrument panel that I'm working on for a customer. So it's over here on the left side. Like all of the UMA indicators that are electronic, that excludes uh, all the uh, uh, airspeed, altimeter, and VSI, which are purely mechanical. Uh, all the electronic ones have a 270 degree sweep. This particular instrument has an expanded scale, which I'll explain in a minute. They all use air vane technology, which is very reliable and very rugged. They all mount from the rear, as do all uh, aircraft instruments. Uh, they're extremely sunlight readable because they have a flat black background and bright white uh, markings and a white needle. So the more light that shines on them, the easier it is to read. The exact opposite of an EFIS. Uh, this one includes an internal and an external alarm. And, as I say, it's customized for the Hilla cycle. Here's a blow up. When I say expanded scale, what I'm talking about is that the lower limit of this is not zero, as most instruments are. It's two gallons per hour. And the effect of that is it stretches the scale out this much. This is, you know, this is a difference of two gallons. So by uh, cutting out the 0 to 2, I'm able to expand this 270 degrees and make it uh, more uh, readable and, uh, and to have higher resolution. As I mentioned, there are two alarms. One of them is this internal LED that you see right here. The other one is a contact that comes out the, uh, the rear of the instrument on a DB9 connector. Uh, and it's capable of sinking a uh, 40 milliamp load. And so uh, I've designed all of these instruments to drive my crew alerting system and my master warning enunciator. But you can drive any load uh, less than 40 milliamps. So uh, a small sealed reed relay is the preferred way to go. You drive the relay with the instrument, and then the contacts on the relay can drive whatever alarm you want. The alarms are triggered right here at the start of the red at 15.9 gallons per hour. And the rest of this video will explain why I picked that point. To get to the gallons per hour, uh, we need to work backwards. First, you should know that B.J. Schramm, the designer of the Hilla cycle, has set the maximum input torque on that transmission at 160 foot-pounds. And he stresses the dangers of exceeding that limit. Uh, there's a video that I posted on YouTube, and you can see uh, his entire video describing the design of the transmission. So anything over 160 foot-pounds, he warns, will uh, severely degrade the reliability and the longevity of the transmission by overstressing it. So we need to work backwards, convert torque to brake horsepower, and then we're going to convert brake horsepower eventually to gallons per hour. So starting at the top, the formula to do that, to begin the process, is brake horsepower equals RPM times the gear ratio of that transmission times the input torque, divided by 5252. When we substitute the values, uh, assuming that you set your rotor RPM to be in the middle of the green, which is 610 to 620 RPM, that gives us a uh, main rotor shaft RPM of 615. The uh, gear ratio of that transmission is 4.875, so that gets us down to the input side of the transmission. And then the input torque is 160 
foot-pounds. We divide all of those over 5252. We come up with a brake horsepower of 91.3. Now, in addition to the power going into the transmission, we're pulling power off of that pulley to drive the tail rotor. And no one knows for sure what that value should be, and it is going to vary depending on flight conditions. So it'll be higher when you're hovering and less when you're in forward flight because the vertical fin is canted at a slight angle, so it provides uh, some aerodynamic anti-torque uh, force to the tail and relieves the tail rotor of some of that uh, requirement. But to keep life easy, let's assume nine uh, horsepower is pulled off by the tail rotor. That gives us a upper limit on the engine of 100 horsepower. We'll round out that three. We'll call it an even 100. Now this graph was pulled out of the back of the solar T62 T-32 engine overhaul manual. Uh, I mark this up after doing uh, another test uh, to determine what the maximum rate of climb would be on my helicopter. And so the red and the green markings are from that test. And this serves well uh, to illustrate uh, how I got where I'm going. So let's start with that vertical line in the middle. Uh, if you go down to the bottom, you see that that axis represents compressor inlet temperature in degrees F. So the day that I did my test, it was about 70 degree F. And that's where that, that uh, vertical line comes from. The green line, if you go over to the vertical axis on the left, that is output power. And so that green line represents 100 horsepower. So we have an intersection between inlet temperature and that 100. Um, the EGT that I saw during that flight was 950. And that's the slanted angle coming uh, from upper left to lower right. And it actually crossed those other uh, two lines, which is always a good sign. And you can see that I've interpolated that between the 1000 and the 900 F lines from the chart. The last arc, which is almost horizontal, is fuel flow in pounds per hour. And so based on the EGT, the inlet temperature, and that 100 horsepower, I then interpolated that line to cross the axis of those other ones and came up with a fuel flow of 107 pounds per hour. We now need to go from pounds per hour to gallons per hour. One gallon of Jet A weighs 6.79 pounds, so it's pretty simple. Gallons per hour equals pounds per hour divided by 6.79. We take our 107, divide that out, and that's where that 15.9 gallons per hour red line uh, limit came from on that gauge. So that's uh, the end of uh, the description of that one. I uh, hope you found that interesting. And uh, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, my website is www.helicycles.org. You can always reach me at juan1 at helicycles.org. Thanks for watching.